There we go. Hello. Welcome back, friends, both old and new. If you are joining us for the first time, welcome, welcome. If you are joining us again, I'm super glad you came back. I have so much fun with you. And by now, I think you've started a very good collection of lots of fun little crafts. Today, we are going to going to continue in our fun little foods. Um, we made mini foods. That was one of my very favorite classes that I have taught so far. But tonight we are going to be making heirloom corn and s'mores. So if you can switch the camera for me, Chanel, I would appreciate that. Here we go. Okay. So today we are making this cute little s'more guy. Isn't he fun? We're gonna be making this little guy and we are gonna be making some really cool heirloom corn. And I have shared a picture with Chanel that she is going to put in the Q&A so that you can see the inspiration behind this heirloom corn. And it looks totally different than what you might find at the grocery store or even at the farmer's market when you're picking out your pumpkins. We, they sell this super cool, like real heirloom corn in Mexico. And so I just thought that was fun. It's Hispanic Heritage Month. And I thought it'd be really fun to share something like this with you. Plus, how beautiful are they? I especially love this blue one with the purple. So look at that picture when you get a chance for your own inspiration. And I think you'll like it. So um, you can, when you're done, what gives me so much joy is when you share, when your adult shares your finished product with me. And so if you would not mind, if your adult shares your picture on social media or your project on social media, would you tag us learn with Michaels or me? This is my personal page. It's La Cozy Casita. I would love to see those. I just really, truly love that because I can't see your little faces on um, Zoom and I can just talk, you can just talk and communicate to me through Chanel, but I still can't see what you're doing. So it's a great way for me to see what you were up to and what you've been working on. Sometimes even when we did the mini foods, I had somebody who kept on going for a couple hours afterwards and they made a little hamburger and lots of fun little stuff. And I just, little foods and I loved seeing that. So if you wouldn't mind finding us there. Okay, it's on to the list. So we've got a lot of things because we have a lot of projects, okay? So, well, we have two projects, but many pieces go into our project. So let's start with the heirloom corn because these are just, this is pretty easy. You're just going to grab pony beads, box of pony beads. I have mine sorted. I think I put on the uh, class list a bag of them, which whatever you have, that works. Okay. So that and some brown or tan Chanel, sti Chanel sticks. <laughs> Chanel is our moderator. Chanel are the sticks that we're using um, or pipe cleaners. However you say it, I say pipe cleaners most of the time. So um, if you don't have this color, it's fine. Just use what you have. Okay. So those are the two things we need for our heirloom corn. Now here comes the list for our s'mores because anytime we are using paint, you know, we have to grab a lot of stuff. So first thing on our list are our popsicle sticks. And this is coming out of our craft case. If you don't have the craft case, it's okay. I use a lot of things from the craft case, but if you just have these things around your house, that's totally fine too. So I am using the popsicle sticks that came out of there. You are also going to get some googly eyes. And we also have pipe cleaners in the case. So if you didn't have tan, you can use any of these. Orange would look cool, any of those colors. You're gonna need your one pink pipe cleaner from your case, because that's what's gonna make our little happy face on our s'more. You might need some scissors, or you will need some scissors, I should say. You're going to need your glue. I use, this is the same glue. It's just a bigger bottle. It's just regular white glue called glitter and sequin glue. Let's find our googly eyes. Where are they? They're buried in here somewhere, or I could have them in another little space. 
you could always uh, sometimes people ask what if i don't have googly eyes you can use sequins or you can use beads or you can just use your own make your own i think i had him put them in my little drawer here so you're going to need some googly eyes I also have these adhesive ones that I like to use. You can use whatever. Oh yeah, I stuck it in my drawer. Here's the ones that came in the case. So I'm using big googly eyes that came in the kit, okay? And then for our cracker and our melting chocolate, we are using paper that came out of the construction, creatology construction paper. So these are the colors that came out of there. It's kind of like an off-white and a brown. So those are the two colors that I'm using. You can see that I had, I, I used it once before, but there was so much paper left on here. I didn't want to throw it away quite yet. So I'm going to be using the leftovers from the time that I made this more. Okay. All righty. And then if you don't have those colors, you could always just color. Use a crayon and color those colors in. That would work just fine. And lastly, we're going to be talking about paint. So this is the paint that I'm using, the acrylic paint from Creatology. And you'll need some paint brushes. The broader the paintbrush, the more surface area you're going to cover. Okay, so um, the quicker you'll be in painting is what I'll say, the broader your brush is. So see, this one's a little thinner. It'll just take more strokes, a little more patience, but they both work, no problem. And then we are going to need, anytime we paint, a little tiny cup of water. You don't need a full cup of water. All you need is a little bit because that's, is just a recipe for spillage. You just need a little bit, okay? Let's see, a pencil. I already said scissors. And I think we are there. Okay, I'm gonna pull out my paint that I need. I need just two colors. The colors that I'm choosing are the white because this is gonna be our marshmallow on our s'more. And I am going to choose pink because we're gonna give some little smiley face. It's kind of giving forky vibes, don't you think? Okay, <clears throat> so I'm gonna put the paint away because all I needed were those two colors. And I have a mat. This mat is protecting my work surface so I don't ruin it. I picked this up at Michael's too and I just love it. I use it all the time now. I do want to protect my surface. But if you have a placemat, that works. Okay, while you are gathering your supplies, or if you've already gathered your supplies, would you please write in the Q&A, you already know what I'm going to ask. How old are you? And where are, today it'll be, where are you crafting from? Okay, so if you would let Chanel know, what um, what what did I say? How old you are? Oh my word. How old you are and what state you're coming from? Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. And then we have got to get going on painting already because we want our paint to dry. So we are going to jump in. And as you get a break, go ahead and let her know or do it right away. But I'm going to start assembling my um little popsicle sticks because we have to do a couple of coats there, okay? So if your, your adult is there with you, they could type in the Q&A. Remember, we're gonna be using the Q&A and not the chat. And also, you if you miss a step throughout this class, do not worry because it's going to be on YouTube by tomorrow probably. So don't worry one bit. All right, so here's the deal. We've got our popsicle sticks. One, two, three, four, five. We've got five popsicle sticks and one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I'm so I'm short one. It's okay. It'll be a skinnier cracker. Okay. And then what we're going to do, actually, I'm going to use this one. So what I was telling Chanel is I went to grab everything and then I thought, oh my goodness, how can I be out of popsicle sticks? I had, I thought I had plenty and I was out. So, um, 
Oh yeah. So I've already glued that one. Okay. So what we're going to do is I had my daughter go grab a popsicle stick from a neighbor. And so they had this one because I had enough to make my s'more, but I didn't have enough for the reinforcement. This is the reinforcement here that we need. Okay. So what this is going to do is it's going to keep all of our sticks in line so they don't just kind of like droop down. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop this popsicle stick. Now, if you have six, one, two, three, four, five, six, you will not have to pop your popsicle stick. You're just going to lay it straight across. Oh, I said tape. I did say tape in the uh, list, but I didn't ask you to bring tape right now, but you do need a little tape. Okay. So what, because mine is just a little short, I do have to pop my popsicle stick. So I'm going to break it just like that. Okay. So here, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to tape my sticks together. So you kind of have to hold them, hold, squeeze them together because if, if they're light and you go to tape see how they're just going to separate so bring them together line them up with your fingers hold them down with your other hand and then just tape across just like that okay and then do it again hold on to it so this is that big word reinforcing making sure that your s'more isn't going to go anywhere now I've got this popsicle stick, tongue depressor. You will have a popsicle stick or you might have a tongue depressor. If that's what you have at home, hey, we're twins. Okay, so now you're going to grab your glue and you can glue it down on the back. Go on, I'm just gonna do a little squiggle. You don't want a ton, a little dab will do ya but you want enough to keep it all together. Okay, so just kind of gently push. Now this is gonna be like a slip and slide. So if you're pushing too hard, it's gonna go whoop. Did you guys do slip and slides this summer? Do they even have those around anymore? I don't know. Okay, so gently kind of push down. We're just gonna hold it there just for a minute, okay? So go ahead, we have, a couple people who have chimed in to let us know how old they are and where they are crafting from. So this would be the perfect time, Chanel, if you could read those to us while we're holding our sticks in place. Yep. Um, we have Sawyer and their crafting partner. I'm not sure. They didn't give a name. Uh, four and six uh, from Utah. Ooh, um, welcome. It's a seven from California. Maybe it's, it's, um, not, yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure how to say that name. Sorry it's if sad. I said it wrong. Um, and then we have Angel 16 from Palm Beach Gardens. Awesome. Welcome, Angel. Welcome, Isa and Sawyer. I'm so glad oh, you're here. Sawyer is actually Calvin in Aislin. Sawyer is the mom. Oh, okay. Got it. Welcome love that. I love when we have big ages like that. That's so cool because then I can say, all right, for my four-year-old, you're going to do this. And my 16-year-old, you're going to roll with it and you're going to do this. So, and it just makes my heart so happy when our teens are joining us because they haven't succumbed to their phone. <laughs> They're getting creative. So way to be here. I love that. Okay. So you guys, this is going to be wet. Okay. So be very careful. We're going to flip this over, okay? But be very careful because it can still fall off. But because we've been pushing down on it, it will stay, hopefully, unless you put too much glue. And in which case, that's okay, too. Just get it fixed. Okay, flip it around, okay? You can see I have just a little tiny bit of glue that came through. So I'm going to grab just a wipe, just a tiny tiny bit. I'm just going to wipe it a little bit. I don't want a ton of moisture on my popsicle sticks because I'm getting ready to paint them. So I just kind of dabbed just a little bit. All right. So now we are ready. We have got to get going and we've got to paint this. 
Okay. So, because we have to do a couple of coats. So I've got my white acrylic paint. Gave, gave it a little shake a shake with the lid on, of course. And you know what? I'm going to be working straight from the lid. I'm not even going to be putting my brush in the whole pot. I'm just going to be working from the lid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my brush in the paint. Now, my four-year-old, if you haven't taken a class from me before, I want to tell you about using a paintbrush. Okay, so when you use a paintbrush, I'm going to come zoom in. We want to be very careful and we're going to treat our paintbrush like it's a ballerina and it's bouncing on its tippy toes. Do you see? I'm just barely pushing down. The brush is dancing on its tippy toes. What we don't want to do with our brush is go like this. Oh no, that's so sad for the brush. Okay, because what will happen is we won't get nice fine lines the next time we're going to paint something with detail. So try your best not to make a fan with your brush like this, but to treat your brush like it's a ballerina and keep your brush brushing on its tippy toes. Okay, here we go, friends. So what I like to do is <clears throat> when we get to the end, I'm going to use another brush or a toothpick or a pencil to kind of hold my um, area down. So we're just going to start brushing here. And the reason I want to hold the area down with, you know, a, a, the back of the brush or the end of the brush is so I don't get my fingers painted. Or so I don't pull off the paint with my finger. So there's nothing super fancy that I'm doing here except for not pushing down hard to make that fan, but I am using a good amount of the brush this time, okay? And you can see it goes on very lightly, which is why I said we kind of got a boogie, so we can let it dry and put on another, another layer, okay? It won't fully, fully dry. Okay, so here, this is what I'm talking about, guys. Watch what happens. Oops, I'm out of the shot a little bit. Sorry about that. Okay, watch what happens, guys, when I just start to brush. Oh, no. See, it's kind of moving away from me. So that's why the end of a brush comes in handy. See, it's kind of keeping it in place. The other thing you could do is you could put it on a paper towel, and then that will help it from sliding as well. Let me show you that trick. So I'm just going to gently pick it up, slide it over, just like so. And then that'll kind of keep it in place as well. And you can brush it this way, okay? So if you get a big glop of paint, now the first coat is really not gonna matter too much the way you put it on. But you do want to try to make it a bit even. You don't want it super thick on one side and thin on the other. So even, think about when you're making a peanut butter sandwich and you're spreading that peanut butter around your sandwich. You wouldn't want to bite into a big old glob of peanut butter in your sandwich. Well, maybe some of us would because it's yum. But it's kind of nice to have it all spread out and give yourself a nice uniform look, okay? So if I get too much, it's gonna start to become tacky. So as you can see, oop, let's hold it back in place. Got away from me. I'm grabbing the paint from one end and going all the way across. All the way across. Just like that. Why did I feel like Bob Ross all of a sudden? Um, we have a couple more friends who, sh who shared Ooh, um, their too. age and where they're from. Okay. Uh, so we have mom, Ashley, with twins Rockwell and Ronan, age four, in Anchorage, Alaska. <gasps> wow, what a brave mama. <laughs> I love that. Hey, I'm a twin too, guys. That's so fun. Wow. 
Well, welcome, welcome. And is it winter in Alaska yet? I don't know that. Because it is not even fall. Today is the first day that I was able to wear a sweater here in North Carolina. So thrilled. I guess in, in Alaska, it would probably still feel like fall to you, but probably to us Southerners, we'd be freezing. What a beautiful part of the country. I'm going to go to Alaska one day. All right. I think we are good, guys. How's yours? Did you get most of your clumps out? You're kind of going in this in one direction, okay? It's better to go across instead of up and down because if you're going up and down, you're going to, it's going to kind of clump up on you between these little grooves here. So it's better to go side to side, side to side. This is a good stopping place for me, okay? I'm going to wash out, oh boy, look at that put some water on my that should be okay okay I just dribbled a little water on my um more fills my cup a little too much okay so I'm gonna put the lid on my paint because I don't want it to dry out so make sure to put the lid on that if you're done. If you're not done, keep working and just kind of peek up at me every once in a while. Okay. And I'm going to set that aside. We're going to let it dry for a little bit. The one day I didn't grab five paper towels. I just grabbed one because I rarely, I don't think I've ever had a spill, but today's the day. I do have some napkins here, so. Just clean up my mess here. Set that aside. Uh, while you're doing that, Ashley gave us an update on the weather in Alaska. She said it's definitely fall here. Temps in the 40s with some leaves on the ground, and almost all the leaves have changed color already. Ah, so it's beautiful there right now. Oh, it's my favorite time of year. I love fall. Oh, I can't imagine in Alaska with all the beautiful trees. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. All right, there we go. So we're I'm gonna let that dry. I'm just gonna put the teensiest bit of white right there where I accidentally had a little spill. I actually love to have mistakes on here because I feel like it's a good teachable moment because I'm able to show you guys how you can fix a mistake and then no one's ever going to really notice. The only person that will notice is you. And if you fix it, you can be like, oh, like sometimes we'll say, wow, I, I'm glad that happened the way it did because now it looks like this. So, all right, there we go. So we're going to let that dry. Okay. Let it dry, and we're going to start on one of our heirloom corn, okay? So we're switching up because we can't go any further on our s'more until this dries a little bit, okay? So that's why we're doing that. So we're going to set this aside. Make sure you've set it aside far enough that you won't bump it or anything with your corn. All this goes to the side, done with the glue. And I'm gonna set my cup aside too because I don't wanna accidentally spill. I really want it aside. Okay. So hopefully you have all finished. If not, again, it's okay. It is all right. Okay, now we are moving on to our corn. I love it. This looks even prettier in real life, this color. So you're going to decide which one, which color you want to do. 
Okay. So look at that picture there that Chanel shared with you. If you want to get inspiration for the heirloom corn that you want to make, I would love to try this one day in real life. I'm going to do this bluish one because I just loved it so much. I just thought it was so beautiful. So I'm going to make this one. And if you look at the picture, you'll see how gorgeous that was. So <clears throat> I like to use a little pot and I'm going to choose those colors. So I'm going to get grays and light blues and a little bit of purple. I got some dark gray, some light gray, a navy. Even in that corn, it had some black. Isn't that funny? Had some yellow. I love the pink that it had. But if you can tell, it's mostly blues and mostly rays and a couple of yellows. Just a couple, because that yellow is really going to stand out. So I'm just going to put a couple of yellows. I love this blue color that I have. I, I just love this color in general. I love really bright, bright colors. And then I, of course, I love the pink. So I'm going to grab a couple of those and just a couple light ones. I just had, oh, look, this one only had one. I'll just put, how about two? And then there were just a few whites and let's see, what did I get? Did I get the grays? I got light grays, dark grays. Oh, a couple of these blues. And a couple of these purples. It's going to make a beautiful heirloom ear of corn. Oh, and it had just one or two blacks. Okay, we have our recipe. So if you wanted to do that one, those are the colors that I pulled. Here are the colors for, this is the one that you might see at your farmer's market. Orange, tan, brown. This is a brick red. And then I have two different types of orange colors. Like this is more of like a tangerine color and then an orange. I've got some white and yellow. Even a, um, oh, look, I have two shades of, two shades of the brown. So even a, a red would look cool here. There's that one. And if you chose, if you wanna do the purple, the one I looked at online had purples, some pinks, some brick red, some tan, and it even had this cool like olive green on it. Oh, I just love these. Love them. Can you imagine what the farmer feels like when he shucks the corn for the first time? It must be just like a little present for him every time. Like, ooh, what colors did we get in this? I imagine the guy who opened this one was like, oh, I got a peek in this one. What a fun little present that would be. Okay, so now we're going to grab four of our pipe cleaners. Four of the tan pipe cleaners. You could use orange if you don't have tan. You could use yellow, green, whatever you like. It could be, I mean, look at how crazy this corn color is. It can be really any color you want. You're the boss of your craft. So you can do it however you want. Okay, here we go. Let me pull up a little bit. Get you in. Okay, so we are going to get started. Now, here's our four. And I'm going to put this, I did a time lapse um, when I made this. So I'm going to put this on my Instagram page too. So you can see me making some of these in, in uh, time lapse. Okay, so we're going to kind of go crisscross like this. I made an X. You see? I think my four-year-olds, I bet you know what the letter X is. So you're going to make an X and then you're going to make another X. So it's not like a star. It's not like that quite yet. It's just kind of bunched together, really. Then you're going to grab it in the middle. Okay. You're going to hold it in the middle. This is probably going to be the trickiest part, but it's not even that tricky. And just twist. One. 
two. So all that's going to do is keep it all together, okay? It's going to keep all of your ends together, and it's going to keep the beads from slipping off. That's it. That's going to be the hardest part, you guys. Okay, so now we are going to just pick one of these arms that are coming out and just start putting your beads on. And the beauty of this is it doesn't matter what color, like the farmer, it's just gonna be a surprise every single time. Well, I sure got paint on my fingers. Wasn't planning on that. Guess I was a messy painter today. Guess that's the telltale sign of a good time. Telltale sign, there we go. Telltale. Two, four, six, eight. We're gonna go, I believe, 12. 10, I believe 12, but let me just double check on this guy. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Yep, 12. I'm impressed I remember that. So you're just gonna put 12 on each arm here, okay? 12 beads. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter which sides you do first. You are just going to be stringing these on. The fun thing is, is that now that I'm going to teach you one, you'll be able to do many of them. So we'll do one together and we'll just see how much time we have. Towards the end. And then we can do another color. There we go. Ooh, it's already looking so good. I love the pink. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. There we go. My four-year-old, you're gonna get really good at counting by twos. Two, and then another one, three, four. I thought these would be super cute. If you made enough of these, if you put them if you have a kid table for Thanksgiving, or even if you just put them out at your Thanksgiving dinner and you can even put like a little piece of paper with the person's name on it and just put it on the plate as a place holder. I thought that would be so cute. Four, six. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Or you could even take it to your teacher. I'm a teacher. And I'm always looking for fun ideas to do with my class. Well, this year I don't have a class. This year I teach. I've taught kindergarten for 14 years, but this is my first year where I don't have a classroom. And I am an ML teacher, a multilingual learner teacher or multilingual learner teacher. And so I teach my friends how to speak English. And so I go into their classrooms. Or sometimes I pull them to my classroom, but I don't have a big classroom this year of students. But as I was saying, I always love to get ideas of things to do with my students. And I always like to do a little Thanksgiving craft. So I bet if you brought this to your teacher, if you go to public school or even private school, unless you're homeschooled, of course, but even if you go to your cohort, I feel like that would be a fun thing to share because it's not very expensive and it's pretty easy. Two, four, six, eight, ten, one more. It's pretty easy to do. Lots of ages can do it. Okay, I'm just going to turn it, turn, 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 so I can do this side because it's just easier. I'm a righty. So it's easier to add them on my right side. So I wanna know if you guys have seen this kind of corn before. When I was searching how to make, I, I had only seen this. And so I was just kind of searching corn and then this popped up in my search, all these beautiful colors. And I was just amazed. Have you guys ever had blue? Corn tortilla chips comes from blue heirloom corn. 
that's how they get that color. They grind up this corn. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And there's a lot of counting of 12, guys. There we go. Okay, you tell us while we're doing this how many or where you're, how old you are and where you're from. We've, we had a California, Alaska. I'm from North Carolina. Who else? Where, where else do we have friends? Chanel, I can't remember. Um, Utah and Florida. Oh, yeah. We are all over the place. Wow. Coast to coast. Nobody in the middle, huh? There we go. Oh, that one looks too long. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I guess we're right. Okay, I have to triple check. Two more, and look, I ran out. So I'm gonna put some more beads on my dish. Let me see how we're doing on time, too. Because time always just slips away from me because I just love teaching these classes so much. They are so fun for me. Would you let us know in the Q&A um, how many classes you've taken with us, with me? Most likely Chanel was there too. I know we had some first timers. I think we had a person on our last class, they said they'd done four classes already. So that's super fun. Oh, I just love that pink against the blue. It looks so pretty. Okay, I think I'll stop there. That should be enough to finish it off. One. Angel says this is her second class with you. Ooh, I wonder what the other class was, Angel. Which other class did you do? My son is really excited for the slime class. We have two slime classes coming up. One is making unicorn slime and one is like an alien slime. And then that one I'm gonna be doing downstairs because I wanna kind of be close to my sink. So I'll be down in my kitchen. And my son might join me, we'll see. Six, eight, ten, or he'll just be out in the wings kind of watching. But he's been wanting to play. We have an alien sensory kit. That's what it is. And he has been wanting to crack that box open. I said, no, not yet. But you can have it when I'm done with my class. He's so excited. My kids got into a big phase during the pandemic, and they were making a lot of slime. Two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. All right, we got it. Now, of course, if you wanted a chunkier little piece of corn, you wouldn't have to go all the way to twelve. You could stop at ten if you wanted. Okay, so I'm going to show you what we do now. Okay, even if you're not done, I'm going to show you how to finish this off. Okay. So I'm just gonna pull these up just a little from the core here and then I'll move them down. But I just wanna give, allow some space to fold these pipe cleaners out there, okay? Doesn't that look like a funky spider, you guys? Funky. Could you imagine if we had spiders like that around? <laughs> we probably do, they just haven't been discovered yet. <laughs> We're in the bottom of the ocean somewhere. Okay, so put two fingers here in the middle and you're just kind of folding these in. So two fingers again, fold it up. 
because I'm just gathering. Okay. So I'm gathering in my hand and don't worry, it's not going to be all spaced out just right yet. Okay. I'm gathering the top. They've all come together. Now is my chance to put the beads, bring them back down. I'm just going around and around and I'm pulling them back down. Just like this. There we go. Okay, so now you're going to, see this one looks quite big and this one looks quite short because of the way that it's bent and folded. And so I don't love the look of that. So I'm just going to add just a couple more. So I'm breaking my rule of 12 and I'm just gonna put a couple more here because I don't want it to be bare right there. And the only reason it did that is because it came all the way down. So you can fix, can fix some things, but you need some room to twist at the top. Okay, so hold on to it <clears throat> with one hand. And then with the other hand, you're just gonna twist twice. One, two, just like that. Isn't that cute? Okay, so now we have to shape the corn. So right now it looks, it doesn't look too bad actually but we are going to kind of shape the corn to make it kind of dome out. So right now it's kind of like this and twisted. So we're gonna kind of make it dome out a, just a little bit. I'm over exaggerating with my hands, just so you can see. Like I'm just gonna kind of bring them out a bit. I'm not gonna bend, I'm not gonna bend it too bad, but I'm going to just shape the wires. Now, if I bend my wire, then it's gonna go, uh, eh, like you're gonna have a big old corner or an angle. So I'm not really going to like bend it, just kind of shaping, just like this. Okay, and then just bring them back together. See, I have a, see how I have this kind of hole here? I'm just gonna bring, space these out a little bit. There we go. You could even do, so we did four, four pipe cleaners you could even try six and see how you like that it would give you a more full effect okay there we go I love it so cute wouldn't that be cute on a Thanksgiving table you could just grab a a cute little um piece of brown paper or orange paper and like just grab a little slip of paper and you could write the name of the person if you wanted to. So my daughter's name is Lena. So you could have somebody write cursive or you could just write it yourself. So. Do hand lettering if you wanted. And then you could just give it a little snip. You could even give it a little tag like this if you wanted just kind of bend it you could even paper punch it oh that would be cute hold me back we are paper punching this guy i love a cute little table so look you could put a little hole in it and you could just string it right on one of these guys Look at how cute that is. I can't even take it. See, and you can make that for your Thanksgiving table or just give it to someone as a gift or whatever. Not fun. Okay, so there's those. Now I think we can move back to s'more. He's pretty much dry. There's a couple little places where the paint is a little wet still, but that's okay because we have 15 minutes and we got to get going. Okay, and so I knew that there would be some little tacky parts still, and that's okay. I'm just not going to touch those. All right, so we are we need to make our graham crackers. I'm going to set these over here so you can see. Okay, and then hopefully you can see that. Okay, we're going to make our two graham crackers <clears throat> and our chocolate, chocolate. So I'm going to grab my pencil and what I did 
to make the grams over here is I just kind of I moved it over onto my paper just to see how wide I wanted to make my grams. And so, because it's going to kind of set on top of these, okay? So I'm going to just kind of, I'm going to go bigger. See how it comes out a little wider? So, and even if you have some popsicle sticks that you haven't painted, that would be a good idea to use that as a guide. So I've aligned it next to the end here and I'm just gonna shift it over. I don't want it to come over too much. See how my cracker is just coming over just a little bit? Okay, and so I'm going to make a line. It does not have to be perfect by any means. Okay, I'm just gonna make one big line. How about that? We're just gonna make kind of like a loose trace here. All right. So I'm just kind of tracing my marshmallow here. Now I'm gonna cut this out. Oh, I guess I should be using my kid scissors. Let me grab my kid scissors. Now for my four-year-olds, if you're not used to cutting, put your thumb on the top, your fingers on the bottom, and you're gonna open, close, open, close, open, close. So it's like an alligator chomping the paper. Open, close, open, close, open, close. Okay, so I have my shape here-ish. Not gonna be this big, of course. Okay, so now I'm just gonna kinda make a line. This is about how thick I want my gram to be, this one, okay? And so when I come to the ends here, I'm just gonna round it out. I'm instead of making a sharp corner, just like a little, a little curve, like part of a circle, just a little tiny curve right in the corner. And again, this does not have to be perfect. See? So it's kind of like a stretched out oval in a way. And then I'm going to make another line about the same width, we call it. Okay, just make another line up here. Doesn't have to be straight or perfect. Just like that. See, I have my, basically I just have two lines. Okay, now here, here's my corner. I'm gonna round it out. So just part of a circle. And part of a circle. It's like a chopped off backwards C a little bit for you. That's just a way to make your corner. If you want sharp corners, you can have sharp corners. If you look at a graham cracker, it's not, it doesn't have a super sharp corner. Okay, look, I don't need this. I'm gonna put X's here. Cause this part I'm not using. That was just extra. <clears throat> X for extra. All right, thumb on top, finger on bottom. Chomp, 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 chomp. Throw that guy away, we don't need him anymore. Do you see how these aren't exactly the same? And that's totally fine. Open, close, I'm going right down the middle now. Chomp, chomp. Okay, now I have my top and my bottom. So now what I have to do is I need to, remember I rounded my corners. I'm gonna cut those corners off. Just like that. There's one. Get rid of my scraps. Throw it in the trash. Okay, here's my other one. Round the corner. Round the corner. There we go. It kind of looks like the tongue depressor, doesn't it? Or the popsicle sticks. Just a little bigger. Okay. So this is the side that I drew on, right? So you can see my lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna flip these around, okay? And if you have a brown marker handy, I did put it in the supply list, but I did not tell you to go grab them. 
If you don't want to grab this right now, don't, don't worry about it. You can do this later. I'm just going to put some dots, just random, just a, I'm going to draw, just a boop, just a little tiny dot, boop. Okay. This is kind of just to give the look of the gram. You know how it has just those little dots. I don't need a ton of them. Just some every once, every, like this place, this looks a little bare. So I'm just going to put one right there. Oops, now I got to put one there to even it out. Okay, now this looks like a domino. So I need to change that. Let me put one right there. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's our gram, top and bottom. And if you wanted to color that brown, you could to make it look more like a graham cracker. You totally could do that. Now we're going to make our chocolate. And who does not like a drippy, drippy s'more with yummy chocolate? I do. Okay, so I'm going to show you what we do now. This one, this part's really fun. So I'm just going to make a little line here because I want my chocolate to be smaller than my graham cracker. Okay. See how my graham cracker comes out further? Then my popsicle sticks. So I'm gonna start here and watch what I do. I'm gonna make a U, a skinny U. Come back up. Now I'm gonna come and make an N, the lowercase letter N. So I'm just like making hills, whoop, whoop, up and down, up and down. Now this one, I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna stop here and I'm making a big fat U. Now come back up. Now this time I'm not gonna go all the way to the top of my paper. And I'm gonna come down here so you can see a little better. Not gonna come down all the way. I'm gonna go make my N again. See, we're just making U's and N's. U, come back up, N. U. And do you see how I'm doing this? I'm going to make one really long and drippy. There we go. And you do not have to make yours exactly like mine because yours is yours and that's what makes it special. There it is. So I just go down, up, down, up, down, up. Now, if you go like this, zip, 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 that's more of a zigzag. Those are V's and W's. So we're going U and up down like little hills and they don't have to come all down some can be skinnier and shorter okay so this is the one that i'm going to use so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cut it out like that and i'm just going to trim and I'm going to make mine come down a little longer. Oh, no, I like I like that size. Okay. So then I'm just going to cut this out. Up, down, up, down. And the more use you have, the more cutting you'll have. Try not to go all the way to the top because you don't want your, um, you don't want to cut your chocolate off. Then you'll have several pieces. So don't go all the way to the tippy top. Down up. And this is really just for a guide. See how I'm not completely following? I'm not completely following it. That's okay. It's just a little guide. That's why we use pencil first. And if you don't like the way yours is coming out, try it again. The other thing you could do is you could just paint it on. That would be fun. I liked using the paper because I just felt like it gave it another texture. So we've used the paint. We've used the texture of the wood. And now we're using paper and it's giving just another layer. Okay. So I'm going to turn this around. Oh, look at how much longer it is than my cracker. So I'm just going to cut this off. I don't need this guy over here. Bye. Okay. So. He's going to go on about like that. I'm layering, just kind of eyeballing to see what it's going to look like. And I like it like that. 
Okay, so get your glue. And I'm just going to put, see, I'm not going all the way to the edge. I'm coming here about in the middle of this top popsicle stick. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue. Little dabble do ya. I don't want a lot. Just a teeny bit. And then I'm going to gently put my chocolate dribbles. We call this chocolate in my house. And then we're going to put graham cracker on the top. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, we're going to need a little more glue. Just you're barely giving a little, little tiny squeeze. Not much at all. I'm barely pushing my thumb in. I don't want a lot here. Okay, now I'm not putting this all the way on the popsicle sticks. See how it comes off of the popsicle sticks in the back? See that? So I'm only putting this bottom part on the glue right there and just gently give it a tap tap. Just like that. Now I'm going to do the same on the bottom. Now remember, if I'm going too fast for you, you'll be able to see this on YouTube tomorrow. So this one's I'm just going to do little dabs. And this one's not going all the way on the top either. But you see where you like it. I need space for my eyeballs. And I need space for my mouth. So I have to leave some room there. Let me slide it. I want to make sure these are even. I don't want a lopsided s'more. Okay, it's time for our eyeballs. I have these wiggle eyes and these wiggle eyes. These came out of the kit. And these are just creatology. I love them because they stick. They're like stickers. Could you not have a blast with that? Oh, I have to tell you something super cool. So our art teacher at our school, she's so cool. And do you know what she does? She has these sticky little eyeballs in different spots. So she has a set right above her lights switch. She just has them in funny little places, like on her hand, hand sanitizer bottle. And it's just so funny because you never know when the eyeballs are looking at you. All right, I'm gonna put one here. Now, if you don't have these adhesive ones, you're just gonna put a dab of glue and then you're going to put your eyeball on it. I do have to, because I get my nails done, I can't pull up these little papers. So I just use a little sticky. I have this little blade that I use, but this is not for you to use. Hear me say, it's probably not the best idea for me to be using it either. I just like to kind of pick it up, I'm trying to do it off sh off screen so pants can read between the lines there. There we go. I love how these just have their own little personalities. I'm gonna put him his eyes, the closer their eyes to get they get together, the sillier they look. So I'm making this guy a little more. He's a little dopey. He's silly looking. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my pink stem to pull it out. <clears throat> and I've got to cut that because he's going, I'm making the smiley face. How are we doing? Oh, my land. Okay, well, it's a good thing we're at the last shot because I always lose track of time. Just have so much fun with you guys. All we have left to do is put on his smile and I'm going to show you how to do the cute little blush cheeks so I just put a little bit just cut off a little bit give him a little smile <laughs> this is why I say he's giving forky vibes all right then you're going to glue a smile and just set Your pipe cleaner right on there. Bring it down. Slide it down a little bit. 
and just set it there. I've got a little bit of fur there. Take that off. Push it down. Okay, last thing <clears throat> is I'm going to do the little pink cheeks. So I'm going to put the brush right in the pot. And then I'm just going to let it kind of drop right here. One. Two. See, I'm not even doing anything. I'm just touching it to the popsicle stick. I'm just letting it kind of drip down. That's it. Isn't it cute? I like he's got a sideways smile. <laughs> he's into trouble. That's what it looks like. He's got a silly eye look. He's into a little bit of trouble. All righty, friends. Let me pull up. So I showed you how to make your heirloom corn and your little s'more. Let this guy dry before you move him around, okay? And then remember, you can find me at La Cozy Casita and learn with Michaels. There we go. So if you take, if your adult took any pictures, please tag us. We'd love to see you. And Chanel, if you don't mind, flip into the front camera. All right, guys, thank you for joining me. This was so much fun. I always have a blast with you. Time flies every single time. I can't wait to see what you came up with. And then remember, if you missed any steps, it's going to be on YouTube tomorrow. Okay, you guys, you have an awesome night. I will see you next week. And I think it's slime time. I'm pretty sure. Check that app. But that's it. Oh, and right on time, my air patch just fell out of my ear. All right, guys, have a great night. And we'll see you next week. Bye.